Hello YouTube and welcome to my channel, Bolt Forward. Today I would like to review my French Moss 4956 refurbished model that I bought from Royal Tiger Imports. And if you will allow me to preach a little bit, I will be speaking out against this company and their deceptive sales tactics. The first part of this video will focus purely on the review of the rifle that I received, while the second half will be the preachy bit. I would love to hear your feedback if you too have purchased anything from RTI. First off, let us begin with how I received this rifle with this dramatic reenactment. Hello Jacob, welcome to the gun store. We got that gun you ordered. Oh wow, this looks deceptively amazing. I will not regret this purchase. You are so cool and always order cool things. So where is the box, bro? Uh, what box, lol? It's RTI. They barely use a box to ship these things. Pay up. Moving forward with this review, I would like to remind everybody that RTI advertises this furniture as being new production. Two rounds in, and the stock already has suffered minor damage, and it shipped with a decent amount of dents and dings in various places. I would say this is probably due to the fact that my rifle was loosely thrown in a cardboard box with no bubble wrap. Moving on to the receiver, I have no complaints about the presentation and quality of the metal. If I didn't know any better, I would say this thing rolled off the assembly line yesterday. This is in stark contrast to the condition of the bolt, which shows major pitting and missing finish. RTI claims that these refurb models get a complete bead blasting followed by a fresh parkerization, but I find that a bit hard to believe on these small parts. This isn't RTI's fault, but I would like to mention this wonderful brown ooze that is just leaking out of my bolt carrier group. I do not have an original Moss 49 to compare this to, but I do own other French firearms, and I feel like the tolerances on the bolt here feel very loose. I attempted to replicate a hang up here, but I couldn't manage to get it on camera, but the bolt is very rough and it does get stuck here from time to time. The bolt also wiggles quite a bit on its tracks and can strike the face of the gas port. For a rifle that's advertised as being like new, this thing gives off serious Craigslist back alley gun show vibes. With that being said, I do not feel that any of these internal components are unsafe or dangerous to use, and their interior condition does seem to be quite acceptable. Once again, the receiver seems to be in superb shape, and I really don't have an answer as for why the bolt carrier group is in such rough shape. RTI does not advertise these as coming with new receivers. I am fully aware that these weapons were more than likely pieced together several times over during their time in Ethiopia, but one would expect the entire rifle to share such wear and tear. Speaking of wear and tear, I think the postman did this little bit here. Remember, this is supposed to be a fully refurbished rifle, but this rear sight is missing a bit of finish. The gun store was adamant that they have received several RTI transfers where the guns are thrown into cardboard boxes without any bubble wrap or protective paper. This is one of those cases where I am more inclined to believe the gun store over RTI. It's a shame that a company would go through all the effort to refurbish a rifle just to cock up during the shipping process. The grenade launcher sight and equipment unfortunately has suffered damage over this rifle's lifespan, though I'm not willing to place that blame on RTI. However, what I will say is that the components feel very gritty and stiff, as if they were refinished while assembled. If you look at the flash hider on my rifle, you can see a stick somewhere in the threads, which tells me that they simply refurbished the rifle without disassembling it. Kinda lazy. The unforgivable sin for this rifle has to be the barrel. For those of us who are in the collector space, barrel condition is arguably the biggest determining factor for, can I actually shoot this thing? When I received this rifle, the barrel was filled to the brim with a hardened speckling that covered every square inch of the inner barrel. Wire scrubs, solvents, penetrating oils, and good old fashioned elbow grease did nothing to break it loose. I have worked on countless Millsurp rifles over the years, and I can't even begin to describe or even explain what the hell was on the inside of my gun. This is probably the dumbest admission that I'll ever make about cleaning a gun, but honestly, I ended up just kind of shooting it out. Not one of my smartest moves, but it worked. However, what I discovered afterwards was that my chamber had some sort of debris or grease on the inside of it. That, 
though appearing to be smooth and clean, was actually a very porous material that was gripping the brass. You can see the indents and pop marks in this brass case here. The case was gripped so tightly that the bolt ended up ripping off the rim of the cartridge. I have since then polished the bore a few times, but I have sadly been unable to test fire this rifle. The magazine appears to be in excellent, almost new condition. I have noticed no issues with it out of the lack of a box, and I am willing to bet that it will function just fine whenever I get this rifle up and running. There is also no slop or wiggle in my rifle. Taking a moment to aim down the sights, the camera doesn't really show it, but my front sight post shows damage. The left wing protector is slightly bent inwards. This is just the nature of old surplus guns, and RTI does not claim or advertise these rifles as being repaired, just refurbished. The last little bit here is the safety. Without an original MOS 49 to compare this to, I can simply say that the safety feels very loose with no positive click or feedback when switching positions. Furthermore, the trigger in this rifle feels extremely gritty, and I am sure that during the refurbishing process they simply reassembled the trigger groups with whatever grease, debris, dirt, grime, etc. and loose parkerization that was there. If you've made it this far in the video, as promised, here's the preachy bit. So I think I've probably made it a little bit clear by now that I am not a huge fan of RTI, and it's more than just this rifle that is the reason why I dislike them. We are currently in a state where mill serps, as we knew them back in the 90s and early 2000s, is gone. The idea of going and getting a, a cheap Car 98K or like a $300 M1 Garand is gone. Those days will never come back. And yes, we could sit around at the gun show all day long and fud lure it out. Like back when I was your age, I could buy 200 miles in the gauge for a handshake. That's never coming back. It doesn't matter if a country discovers they have a million SKSs. They will never sell for 50 to $75 ever again. And so when RTI comes along and all of a sudden is like, hey guys, we've got them cheap. It really appeals to a massive market that is sitting there looking for kind of like a return to the good old days of the past where they can finally get their hands on these old guns without breaking the bank. I mean, when RTI was advertising, like they had car 98s for like 400 bucks, absolutely crazy considering that they are now, there are now people on YouTube saying that, oh, I found a 98 K in, in a garage sale, $5,000. And it's a mix matched, uh, Czechoslovakian copy. So w where I draw my anger is that RTI kind of kicks in the door and they're like, we have huge stockpiles of guns and they're cheap. You can be a collector. You could be just like everybody else who has built big collections. And we are here as the vanguard of surplus. We are the saviors of this hobby. And we're going to present to you fantastic rifles in mint condition. I remember them arguing that they were like, these rifles are in great shape and they would crack open these cases. And it was like, oh my God, how did they let this into the country? And they were pulling guns out of cases that were just rotting. The barrels were rusted. The metal was rusted. The finish was gone. And they tried to chalk it off saying, it's just a little dirt. It'll come out just fine. To somebody who's been collecting for a long time, who's been around a lot of gun shows or gun stores, we have physically held these guns in our hands. We have shown many a light down bores. We have asked countless times, can we take it apart? We have been able to put our hands on it. So whenever somebody like RTI comes along and advertises dirt cheap car 98, a lot of us raise eyebrows, but we have a never ending supply of new shooters who are entering the market. Young people who grew up with Battlefield or Call of Duty, pretend that Vanguard never happened, that are like, well, I would love to own these guns. And they do not have the experience that somebody has been collecting for 5, 10, 15, 20 years or their entire life does. And unfortunately, they don't have a lot of money. So they're always going to go for the low hanging fruit. 
And so when a company says, you don't have to spend $3,000 on a Moss 49, we can give you one for 600 bucks. It's safe. It's fine. We refurbished it. They don't know. And they get a gun that is borderline dangerous or falling apart or is deceptively in good shape. Well, that 600 bucks that they may have struggled to scrap together is gone when they could have spent that money on another firearm, which is in mint condition or in great shape at a gun show. We are in an age where people want to be able to click and buy. And regardless of your opinions on that, people want to have that capacity. So it is up to companies like RTI to honestly advertise these things. This is my big frustration with this gun here. They advertised it as being refurbished like new. And being a surplus gun from Ethiopia, they do kind of say like, oh, it might require, you know, a little bit of cleaning. This gun received from RTI was damaged and unsafe to shoot. In fact, it doesn't even work. If they had ever test fired any of these, they would have known that this rifle was non-functioning. It rips the casings off, the shell casing remains in the barrel, and that bore, the barrel, was clogged. You cannot slap a coat of spray paint on a gun and say, have at it kids, it's like new. You can say it's freshly refurbished gunsmith special. You should probably put in huge letters, have a professional armorer check these out, not for new collectors, something, anything. But if they do that, the people who are sitting there looking for that, I don't have a lot of money, I want to get into surplus, they're going to sit there and go, well, I can't get to that. I don't know anything about this. And so it's deceptive. Somebody like me, when I walked into this, I bought this was on sale. Like it was normally a $900 gun. They had it on sale for like 600 bucks. The shipping was cheap. My local gun store that does um, transfers only charges like $10. So I was like, I'm out 640 bucks. If this goes to shit, I can, I can take that hit. I can do something with this. But I'm just thinking of somebody else who maybe can only buy one gun very sparingly, that they just don't have the money for it, and they went all in on something from RTI. They're, they're stuck with garbage. And unfortunately, because of the nature of really hard-to-find surplus, RTI is just going to keep pushing garbage. And they will keep telling people that it's fantastic, and they will make up their own grading system. Oh, it's... This is A grade yesterday, well, it's B grade today. Well, it's A grade again, just in time for Christmas. Furthermore, when I attempted to type a review, a pretty in-depth, angry review about this gun, they would never post it. But if you go to RTI, a lot of their five-star reviews are up. It's almost like they intentionally do not want anybody talking bad about a gun. The fact that there are no one-star reviews is concerning because regardless of how good something is someone's always going to find something to complain about and it just tells me they're going back and scrubbing the we shouldn't buy this product because they want to offload it and it, that, that's deceptive it's literally it, it's shady and if you consider their history with like io ak's and the other stuff they've done in the past like rti just reeks of shady deceptive and crazy i honestly find it very Shameful that there are major YouTubers out there that have kind of sung their praises, probably because they were allowed first dibs and got to handpick the best one out of the batch, leaving the rest of us to suffer with this. Should you buy from RTI? I don't know. I'm not an authority on that. If I could try to convince you not to, I would be happy with that. I honestly think that the Millsert game right now is one of patience due diligence, and just luck. You know, yes, it's easy to go on the internet, click add to cart and buy, and you don't have to haggle, you don't have to go out and look for it, but honestly, you're really gambling with RTI. I mean, you are really playing with the deck stacked against you in that case. My advice is to steer away from that website, take your time, save up some money, and if you want to get good deals, if you want to end up with rifles that look good and don't cost you an arm and a leg, you need to have an open mind, be prepared, be knowledgeable about the guns that you want to buy, and have a credit card or some cash on you. It's kind of like fishing. 
you gotta throw your line out there and wait sometimes to land the big one. Honestly, a lot of my best purchases have been, I was at a gun show, I knew what I was talking about, and somebody was like, uh, you know, you seem like a really cool guy, uh, it took 150 bucks off of it. Like, sure. So in conclusion, I honestly regret buying this rifle. I regret giving RTI my money, but it was a lesson that I was willing to learn. It's really kind of up to you to determine if you're willing to learn that lesson or if you're willing to take that gamble. If you've stuck around this long to watch this whole thing, I really thank you. Leave your comments in the comment section below and uh, thanks for watching.